Man. <laughs> I cannot believe it. I've been here longer than I thought. Another beautiful day. I think I got like three more miles to go. It is so funny. <laughs> I've just been talking to someone on Instagram. That is so funny. People just join in and just run their mouth. And I'm just out of here. I probably, I spent more time on this run than I thought I would. <laughs> but here we go. Another beautiful day. Coming up to mile 11. <laughs> you know, just kind of just taking it easy. Yeah, as usual this morning. And uh, people always want to debate. They're always debating. But uh, this social media thing is amazing because I went on here, blah. It is, people want to join in. <sighs> so another beautiful day today. Mile 11. Just taking it easy. You know. It's funny. 13 miles every day don't even feel like nothing anymore. <laughs> that thing feels like a walk in the park. Yeah, it's like I'm walking in the park. Like, you know, just like a pure jog in the park. You know, it's just... Uh, don't even matter anymore. I could do that with my eyes closed. You know, so I don't even know what I'm talking about today, except uh, I was talking to a young lady in Arizona on my Instagram page. Uh, she asked a lot of questions. You know, and I'm telling her my traditional background and beliefs, and it's just amazing how people think. You know, and when people, I hear this thing a lot, I'm an atheist. Oh, I'm a theist. I believe in God. I don't believe in God. And I just think a lot of people don't even know what that biscuit means. You know, and... Uh, and that's just because man has created, you know, certain individuals think that they are the only one who have God's phone number. <laughs> yeah, I wish everyone would realize that you are all God or whatever that energy is. And that phone number is right there in your brain. You can speak to it. Yeah. That phone number that will help you deal with stress whatever situation you're dealing with is right there in your brain it hasn't been taken away from you it's always been there it never left you I think it's almost I don't know what time it is maybe about 6 o'clock you know I'm just cruising you know and I don't know how to say this yoga man Yoga has blown me away these days. The strength, the, the calisthenic push-ups. It blew me away. Yeah, because I decided I want to get to know myself spiritually, physically, and it just blew me away. Like, literally, I never thought the day would come. Like, uh, I do 13 miles every day, Monday to Friday, just because. You don't even feel like I'm jogging or running. This basically, it, and that's just that yoga and meditation. You gotta learn how to do yoga because uh, breathing exercise, that's what they should have been teaching us. Because in order to understand this thing called God or whatever you're gonna call it, you have to breathe a certain oxygen into your brain. All you have to do is just look at your brain the way it's designed your emotions if you are not breathing into that body into that brain stress is always going to take over you and understanding god within you it's just going to be impossible so a lot of us it was not introduced to us but there's just something about breathing into the body yeah. 
some people only believe in God or energy, whatever they want to call it, because of their jobs or because of the material things that they have. But when you learn how to breathe into this body, it is just amazing. It is really funny when people are commenting, uh, yeah, oh, so how you doing? Oh, wow, have you run that ultra before? And I'm looking at, it's like ultra. I've done that. You know, I just, yeah, I run 100 miles. And the reason why people keep on asking me the same question when they see the amount of miles that I run every single day is one thing. I have a brown skin. And a brown man is not supposed to be able to run 100 miles. It never seems to fail me. I had a guy yesterday giving me advice on running. And I just get quiet. You know, what ultra to run, what he's planning to run. And you know, these days, they put your name out there. I didn't even know. Man, he went to Google me and come back 30 minutes later telling me he's sorry that he didn't think I had that experience. And that right there, I just look at it to be that stereotyping. It is just amazing that I don't understand why people just have to put a skin color towards an activity. Yeah, and it never seemed to fail me. I get so much advice about running, it's not even funny, and people always call me back and trying to tell me, oh, we didn't know you run ultras. I'm like, I don't run ultras to run ultras, but I've already done that. You know, it's just a, it's a spiritual thing to me. You know, and that's why I keep quiet in the running community. I'm on this traffic light right now, just posing, waiting for this light, you know. Because it's funny, I get so much advice every single day. You know, I had a lady ask me the other day, uh, since I run this long distance, they recommend I should sign up for this ultra. These are the ones. And I'm just like, wow, this is really funny that we have been so close-minded that we put this label, this label on one another. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing when it comes to this, you know, because I, I, I don't say nothing about this long distance running thing, but golly, for me, this just comes natural. I can run forever. Just go out there and just do a slow pace forever. Even with this little tightness that I have in my lower back that I'm healing forever, it just comes natural. You know, and the advice that I get, all these experts that are always trying to talk to me, I'm just like, man, this is just so funny. And because I keep quiet, one thing I do admire is how they always come back. Wow, we didn't know. I'm so sorry. I'm just like, no, you know, I get it. It's that stereotypicalness, that stereotype, you know, that somebody, we have to put somebody in the box. That. And it's one of the reasons why I kept on doing this thing because one time, one day, <laughs> this thing will go down and it will be able to inspire a little one that your looks doesn't define what you can do. You know, what you can actually do comes from the bottom of your heart. It's all in the mind. Yeah. And that whole thing about talking about running and especially the new runners it just cracks me up <laughs> it just cracks me up and I look at it to, uh, to be another thing is that what do I call it I always call it ego ego and especially the social media lately because I've been on it a lot you know I've really for a long time I kept this thing quiet because it's just I was just shocked about the talent that, wow, it just comes natural for me to just go out there and jog and run. Let's just do miles upon miles. It just comes natural. You know, I truly know it's a God-given or a higher power. Yeah, because uh, I embrace it because all that inspiration to me comes from the woman. The moment I saw my son being born, I knew I could run forever.
<laughs> you know, and I did, you know, and I embrace it. I don't even know how I do it, but I just kind of just embrace it and look at it and just, you know, I watch all the experts. I see them speak and I don't say nothing, but I truly just laugh because this thing called color has done such a color and racial and cultural discrepancy has actually done its best you know we create this image of yeah you look a certain way this is how you got to behave this is what you got to know how to do it absolutely just blows me away <laughs> yeah so because this is a talent I don't really see anything to it. I just know I can move my body. You know, I train like a, yeah, like an athlete, like a real, real professional athlete, they will call it. But to me, this I do in the name of one thing, that energy, spirit, God, or whatever you want to call it. That's the only reason why I get up and do this. I see people and tell me, oh, why don't you go run the peace tree and win a lot of money? It's not even about that for me. I don't give a biscuit. You know, I've seen people get so mad at me for it. But I do this in the name of the higher power. Uh, and uh, I am just so, that's why I, I always say, after almost 40,000 miles, you can't tell me that this is not G-O-D or higher power, ancestors, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I mean, I even run through an injury. <laughs> I just run slow. <laughs> and the body healed itself. That biscuit took like three years. I did it. So it's just, I don't know, it's a gift. It's a gift. So that's what I'm just talking about this morning. And uh, when it comes to this whole spirituality thing, uh, motivation is speaking, reading, and I get it. And like I always say, it's so funny that in order for you to be able to control your emotions, whether you want to deny it or not, <laughs> your body has to be in a certain physical conditioning for you to understand your emotion. Period. Because if you're, when your body is not intact, truly at a certain level of uh, um, activities you're just playing games yeah you just and i'm just saying it with real let me point the camera to my face you're just playing games yeah because to under, that thing called god the world metaphysics you got to study it you got i mean like i said the whole idea of yoga just blew me away i'm shocked i am just truly shocked yeah, same thing when I see Indians. They're looking like I'm crazy when I start telling them about their own Baba Gita. Even the Chinese people look at me like, what? And I just think that's stereotypical of this brown skin. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, I'm a mile coming up to mile 11 right now. <laughs> you know, and... Uh, I do this for fun. I watch a lot of YouTubes and I see all these runners, but I just, ah, what can I say? What can I say? I said, I love this life. And this, yes, it is a gift. And I do not take it lightly. And, ooh, let me put that camera right here. I honor the Iyamis. This is a gift from the woman feminine God of the of my tradition. I tell you what, I've, every single one of my downfall and inspiration has been from a woman. That's why I truly believe in this feminine energy. The power that a lot of women carry, they don't even realize it. And like I was telling her sister, I was talking to this right now, I use the word, she's been masculinized. You know, so, <laughs> I'm just rumbling my mouth, I'm not thinking, I like that blue sky. You know. I got two more miles to go and uh, I'm gonna say one love and wow read a book read 
this is the information of reading you know this is not the time where anyone can lie to you about who you are what you're supposed to be what you're supposed to believe anymore this is the best time to be alive you know we have no reason for letting somebody else control in our mind there are thousands of books these days that were actually that's been written before you and I got here and you will find out so many things because when we read I'm telling you ignorant will disappear and we will fight less because true reading we learn about other people like for example most religious people never even read their own books and they will swear to the court that that biscuit is right <laughs> yeah. they only read like two chapters they will fight read a book My inspiration for reading came from one of the books that I read by a slave. She said in that book that she would tell her kids to read the book from the beginning to the end. And when I read that book, I forget the name of it. <laughs> yes, I read books like I'm taking an exam every day. And the more I read, as an African descent, all I can say is, damn, I was bamboozled. <laughs> read a book because when we read we become one read a book yeah because if you're not reading your brain cells are dying and on top of it you're not exercising come on who are you fooling read a book read a book anyway let me say one love. I like this beautiful thing that I'm seeing over here. Until next time, I share it.